All right, don't die. Yep, yep, yep. That's good advice. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're out here, scooter gang. All right, all right. Oh, yeah. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is a very special day because I am out here testing out my rebuilt baby. My wired cruiser rebuilt with dual batteries, shunt modded to 3000 watts, nominal. Goes higher when the battery is at full charge though. But I'm going to make a full video on this bike in a little bit however today i'm not here just testing it out so the topic of today is going to be seven critical factors to consider when you're trying to decide between an e-bike and an e-scooter because those seem to be the two most popular types of personal electric vehicles that you can buy nowadays and we're going to talk about seven very important critical factors to consider when it comes to choosing one or the other so without further ado let's jump right into number one and if on occasion you do see my notes down here that's just to make sure that i stay organized with my thoughts i can't memorize this whole script so we're just gonna go from that so number one is security and portability by far the scooter is better for that Obviously, it's much smaller, it's much more portable, even though they are heavy because of the batteries and the motors and whatnot. Some of them are as heavy as some e-bikes. Overall, they still just have less parts to them, therefore, they're going to be less weight, and that's gonna make them a lot more portable. Also, they're smaller, so that means they can fit into smaller spaces versus a giant bike, especially these fat tire bikes. They are big. Those are some big bikes. Anytime someone sees one of my fat tire bikes and they're not used to them, they're like, what is that thing? What is that motorcycle? This thing is huge. But little do they know, that's what all fat tire bikes are like now. They're just huge, right? That's because the wheels are just huge on them. But anyways, without a doubt, the portability scooter wins there. And when it comes to security, scooters, in my opinion, also win because you can actually just take them inside wherever you're going unlike an electric bike you typically can't take that where you're going shout out to mr central driver who i see pulling his e-bike in directly into his job a lot of people can't do that but if you have a small scooter you can go ahead and just take it right up to the office wherever you are and just sit it down next to where you're working versus it having to be locked up next to some bike rack and then you're worried about all kinds of locks. Are these locks gonna hold up to angle grinders and bolt cutters? That's a cool sheriff's car, I love that car. Are these locks gonna hold up to angle grinders and whatnot? You don't have to worry about any of that. You just take the scooter inside and you're all set. So when it comes to security, the scooters win. Number two thing we're gonna talk about is practicality. So when it comes to storing things on your personal electric vehicle, let's say you want to go do some grocery shopping, run some errands, pick up a couple things, the electric bike will definitely win. You can attach all kinds of bags to it, all kinds of trailers, whatever. You can just store so much stuff off of an e-bike versus a scooter you're limited to maybe one of those like front bags that are mounted on the handlebars and then whatever backpack you you are carrying and that's about it that's all you're limited to so when it comes to storage capacity the e-bike definitely wins in that sense and when it comes to the practicality of commuting to work let's say you want to use it just to commute in my opinion i think that depends because a scooter i think is great if your commute is very short like one to three miles you know you can you can zip through those miles pretty quickly uh, while standing on a scooter but if your commute is a lot longer than that, you probably don't want to be standing the entire time. Yeah, some of these scooters do have seats, but for the most part, you're going to be standing. And that just wears on your legs after a while. So if you have like a commute that's 15 miles, yeah, you probably want to get an e-bike for more comfort. Especially if you're going to have to jump curbs, maybe hit some potholes. Oh, bumps. 
See that bump on an e-bike would be nothing. Well, with these little little wheels uh, deal with traffic. You'll have more road presence with a uh, a big e-bike, and a lot more security under those harsher circumstances when it comes to jumping potholes and whatnot or jumping curbs than a scooter. Not to say a scooter can't do it. It's just easier on an e-bike because of the wheel size and the size of the vehicle. So next we're going to talk about comfort and ease of use and by far the e-bike wins in this category because almost everyone knows how to ride a bicycle. You know we were all taught at least my generation was taught how to ride bicycles from when you were a kid. Almost everyone knows how to do it and it's pretty easy to use if you know how to ride a bike you know how to ride an e-bike. Mine is something that's got a tremendous amount of power that you don't know how to control. Most people can easily figure out how to ride an e-bike. However, with a scooter, it's not as simple. And the reason why, in my opinion, is there's a little bit more balance involved because you have only, what, four points of contact versus five on a bike, meaning both your hands, both your feet, and you're seated on a seat versus a scooter, it's just your feet and your hands. And when it comes to braking and accelerating, especially braking, you definitely have to shift your weight around a little bit more. It takes a lot more skill to shift your weight around under hard braking when you're on a scooter than when you're on an e-bike. Because if you do some hard braking on a scooter and you don't shift back your weight, you'll end up just flying right over the bars. You just fall right over them. You gotta be careful with the braking because at least while standing, it really pushes you forward. With a bike, you're seated and you're, you're, I just feel a lot more stable. I can brake hard on a bike and feel a lot more confident than braking hard with this thing. You gotta kinda like sit down when you're braking on this hard. Uh, same thing when it comes to hard accelerating. You have to be careful when you accelerate, otherwise you're just gonna fall backwards. You gotta hold on for dear life, right? Uh, so for that reason, comfort and ease of use definitely goes to the e-bike. For a bicycle, you're also in a nice seated position so you can go for longer trips versus a scooter you're generally standing i know they have seats i know but you don't hear people doing 100 mile scooter races versus bicycle people can bike all day long it's just a lot more comfortable to sit on for long periods of time the longest bike ride i've, I've gone on straight through i got off like a couple times but that was only for like a minute was four hours and yeah my butt did hurt after that but i wouldn't even try to do that while standing on a scooter would not even attempt it. Bicycles also have more suspension travel, bigger wheels, and overall it just makes the ride a lot more comfortable. I know there's a lot of scooters out there with huge wheels, huge suspension, but they do not compare to what uh, an e-bike can do with the same thing, with big tires and big suspension, and the wheel size also makes a huge difference when rolling over objects. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is off-roading ability. Now, I've seen a lot of scooters that can do some serious off-roading, like it's, it's impressive. There's a couple of things that you have to consider when it comes to off-roading a scooter versus an e-bike. Number one, your wheel size, again, will play a big difference in how you're going to roll over objects because a big wheel will much easily roll over objects than a small wheel. That's one of the reasons why a lot of mountain bikes nowadays have 29 inch size wheels versus 26 inch, right? It's a, it's a big upgrade. It's easier to go over bumps, easier to go over rocks. Versus a scooter, your wheels are going to be very, very small. So if you come across a rock that is the size of the wheel and you're on the scooter, you're not gonna get over that rock versus an e-bike will easily roll over that rock. So when it comes to any kind of super aggressive off-roading, the e-bike will definitely win, hands down. When it comes to snow and sand, definitely the e-bike will win. Again, because of the ground clearance issue, your scooter in deep snow is just going to be plowing the snow versus a bike with good knobby tires, maybe even studs in the tires, will easily go through that snow, especially if it's all wheel drive, then it'll just go right through. Something else to consider when it comes to these small, tiny wheels that scooters have is that they, they develop a tremendous amount of torque because they're small. And when they do have traction, it's excellent, it's amazing. However, because there's such a small surface area touching the ground because of the small wheels, they tend to lose traction a lot easier than bicycle wheels. And you'll commonly see these dual motor scooters when trying to accelerate in dirt, they're just burning out 
all the time, losing traction during acceleration, therefore not giving you any grip and you can't move anywhere and you end up falling. Oh, slipped. Oh my gosh, that is so loose. The Eagle One stood no chance as it slipped and slid around the trail in an extremely frustrating way. Versus a bicycle tire, again, bigger surface area. You get a lot more traction because of that wheel size. So for off-roading, e-bikes definitely take the win there. However, that's not to say that scooters can't do it. You won't be able to do as much as on a bicycle. Next, let's talk about power efficiency. And obviously the e-bikes are gonna win hands down because you have your legs to power the bike in addition to the electric motor or motors. Right? It's kind of like a hybrid car. Hybrid car runs on dead dinosaurs and the power of an electric motor versus we run on live dinosaurs. Sorry to do that. We run on live people, right? Your legs, you're alive, you're working, pedaling hard and that electric motor versus a scooter is just purely electric power. So when it comes to overall efficiency and range, the e-bikes obviously will win there. And that's gonna help a lot when it comes to range anxiety because you know that if you, God forbid, lost power, whatever happened, you ran out of battery, something broke on your uh, bicycle, you can always easily pedal back to, well, maybe not so easily, but you can pedal back to where you need to go versus a scooter using big electric scooters without any power is a huge pain in the ass because you have to really reach down pretty low to push the ground and you have no efficient way of propelling yourself forwards versus bicycles are incredibly efficient the way they're set up. You're using your legs pretty much at the same time with the chain, turning the legs. It's very, very efficient. It's, there's a big reason why a super popular mode of transportation all around the world is a bicycle, not a scooter. They're just more energy efficient. Next, we're gonna talk about the X factor, which is fun and looks. Good hill climbing though, the small wheels definitely give it a lot of torque. This thing's got some power. At 20 miles an hour up this moderate hill, picks right up. 32. Now, this all depends a lot on personal preference. I've seen scooters that look pretty cool. They look awesome. I've also seen e-bikes that look pretty cool. Conversely, I've seen some e-bikes that look very, very dorky. And don't get me started about how seats look on scooters. It looks terrible. It looks so dorky. So when it comes to looks, it all depends. It depends which kind of scooter, which kind of e-bike you get. And when it comes to fun, also that depends. Some people say e-bikes are more fun. Some people say scooters are more fun. I think scooters are probably more fun. They probably take the win. There's just a little bit more excitement when it comes to standing and jumping, let's say you're off-roading on a scooter versus with something that you're seated. I'd say the scooter probably is a little bit more fun, but that's only if it's a fast scooter. Uh, and that's just my opinion. There's just a lot more involvement. You're leaning, you're leaning back, you're leaning sideways. You're more involved in the experience versus sitting down on a bicycle and pedaling. But trust me, there are some fun e-bikes out there. This one that I'm on right now, 3000 watts, this thing is a beast. It'll go almost just about 40 miles an hour on flat and accelerates like crazy. So this thing is pretty fun also. And lastly, let's talk about costs. So scooters are obviously a lot cheaper because you're literally buying less stuff. Scooters are smaller, there's less components. You're not gonna be buying as much buying a scooter than an e-bike. And that means that you can spend more money on something that's faster. There's a lot of 40 miles an hour scooters out there that are pretty damn affordable versus e-bikes that go 40 miles an hour are a lot more expensive. So. In the cost department, I think scooters definitely win. So what do you guys think? Did I miss anything in this list? Let me know what you would prefer and why. Why would you prefer a scooter? Why would you prefer an e-bike? For me, I got started with e-bikes. I did try a scooter once. My brother-in-law bought a scooter. He already sold it, but I wanted to try it out. It was on the faster side. This thing goes uh, between 30 and 40 miles an hour. And it was a fun experience. I definitely had to learn how to use it first. 
um, because there's a lot of leaning involved, especially when it comes to hard braking. But it's a pretty good experience overall. I still prefer bikes. I don't know why. I just kind of maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm just more comfortable with them. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below which would you rather get. What did you think of the list I made? And that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time.